one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. Oh yeah, feel the burn. Hey buddy, what's up? Hey, what's going on? What are you uh what are you up to? I'm training. Yeah. What well, huh? I'm getting ready to play 24 hours of video games. I don't want to cramp up halfway through. Okay. What are you doing down here? At the point? Yeah. Isn't this where everyone trains? Good point. Oh yeah, feel it. Donate now at ChachiPlays.com. It's for the kids. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start! Yeah! Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, Ray Get Techie Get Geeky, uh, here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the studio. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. With me on the couch in the studio, everybody's here! Hey! <laughs> Now's when we need the balloons. Yeah, which balloons? <laughs> Hold on, I might have a couple over here. I don't know if I can throw them that far. But Katie at K Dutters on the Twitters. and uh, The camera's over here now. So I know, weird. we're trying a different angle. We were trying this for one of the shows earlier. So I'm like, oh, let's see how this works. Let me know how you like it. It's a little weird. We should put like six cameras up. And yeah. we'll just let, we'll like sword flip between them and it'll be like us guessing which one we should be looking at <laughs> put a light on top of it <laughs> we're not ready for that setup yeah. we're not ready for this but we are getting a little more spiffy we will uh talk about that a little bit in the awesome things of the week uh but of course this is your awesome cast where uh we like to talk about tech and social media all kinds of things a little bit of a fly flyover state point of view here in pittsburgh um of course uh we record here every tuesday at 6 30 p.m eastern on sorgatronmedia.com you can join us in the chat room just like our friends like uh crazy kraus uh, hot wheels uh do it uh, every week uh practically uh to let us know what you think of uh some of our things and and any stories you want to suggest uh just pop over there or uh you can check us out on twitter at awesomecast or on facebook on google plus um, or drop a slide at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And you can find the audio and video of this over on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, wherever is more convenient for you. Uh, so let's get right into it with our awesome things of the week. Uh, Katie, you got something pretty awesome coming up. Yeah, um, something pretty cool. And I kind of have to cross promote myself here. Um, as you may or may not know, I work at Scarehouse. And one of the cool things about Scarehouse is we were featured on the cover of an international hunt magazine and on this website. Uh, usually this place um, highlights big events, um, like things like Bush Gardens. And next month they're highlighting um, the new Harry Potter experience. Nice. But this month they have us on the cover. Um, this whole immersion um, hunt that we, we, especially with the basement, if you have experienced the basement or not, it's a totally different way to scare people. And it's a different kind of scare. And they actually have picked up on it. And it's got that much attention that we made the cover of this international magazine, which is a huge, huge deal. Nice. How far do you have to book in advance for, for the basement? Uh, usually, if you book at least a couple nights before you okay. want to go, you can get in pretty easily. Um, it's all within the increments. So whatever time slot you want, mm -hmm. the earlier obviously the, the better you'll get um but yeah this is kind of a big deal and i just actually wrapped up a podcast with margie and scott this afternoon so nice. yeah um that there's there's a lot of cool things coming with scare house uh, a lot of a lot of uh, things being tore apart at this point, um, which is scary and different and <laughs> exciting. I always like that because I mean they, they, we've had, of course, Scott on the show before to talk about it, and they're they're always very active off season. You know, um, I see videos. You know, it feels like every week, every other week. There is. Uh, uh, he's posting YouTube. a video every week. Every week, mm -hmm. I, I see a I see a pop up there early <laughs> in the week, and it's like, wow, really, wow. Um, so they always have something. They have the podcast that keeps going. They mm -hmm. find different angles to to bring into that uh, that 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 makes sense with Scarehouse, you know, in the long run. It, that that's the way to do it, you know, mm -hmm. keep every, in everybody's mind. And then when it comes around for that season, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're all good to go. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Yes. So 
And I mentioned Awesome Cast. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm doing my cross pimp cross pimping. I'm calling it now. Cross pimping. pimping. <laughs> awesome. Um, Chilla, what do you got? So I got Dropcam is coming out with some software updates for their pro line um, that actually does facial recognition. So if you have a drop cam in your house for doing like video monitoring or whatever, obviously the drop cam offers video monitoring from remote location or in your house. And then there's two way audio on there too. So you can communicate with whoever's around the house. Mm -hmm. um, they also are putting out these small sensors that are only about 30 bucks a sensor and you can pretty much stick them to anything and they will be able to tell you if like a door is open, a window is open, those kinds of things. But I think the facial recognition is interesting. So you'll be, you can actually train it much like your Xbox connect can tell who's, who's in front of the Xbox and, and auto log someone in. This allows you to be notified of who's in your house. Um, I could see as, as we have a new baby in the house, I'm picking up one of these. I'm a little hesitant from some of the hacking stories I've heard when it comes to webcams, but I think based on a drop cam has a pretty good reputation when it comes to security, automatic, uh, firmware updates. Most of the hacks you hear were already patched in firmware releases or software updates that no one ever applied. Um, or they left the default password. Mm -hmm. kind of thing which is um, funny because it even says the first line here says they are not a security company at job camp. not yet well so they don't have like yeah you can get an alert but they're not going to contact like the police for you or anything okay. from that aspect of security um i like the idea of being able to tell if a door is open closed what whatnot i've been known to leave the basement door open and not remember to shut it at night um <clears throat> so that would be nice just to be able to get a quick update is a door is a certain door open or closed so uh, i'm pretty impressed with this it's a, it's a little on the pricey side mm -hmm. but any the the one thing that i think you're getting when you when you pay pay the price for drop cam i think their devices start at like 200 bucks and up and the plans start at 99 to... you don't have to subscribe to a plan you don't so that's if you want like offline dvr recorded to the cloud and kept for a certain amount of time I think the $99 plan gets you seven days of recording stored up on the cloud from surveillance from a surveillance point of view. And like the $300 gets you 30 days. I'm not as interested in keeping a recording of the house. I'm more interested in I'm in the backyard and I want to check what's going on in the crib or I'm wherever in the house and I want to see what's going on in a certain room type mm -hmm. thing. Um, Obviously, they have to be able to be plugged in somewhere. That's one of the downfalls, but things require electricity still. So, <laughs> One day we'll get by this. Yes. One day. <laughs> one day. Awesome. Um, the only, and I was wondering what people are using this for, because the only thing I know Dropcam for is like uh, certain studios in our places will have a Dropcam that's like, hey, this is what's going on if you want to check in, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, like, I didn't, I didn't know that they were, were they generally for? houses like this a lot of it's for could because of the two-way audio feed mm -hmm. it was i think a lot of it's meant for the house okay for you to be able to check in when you're away teenagers and then that's the other thing they, they talked about <laughs> is you have a teenager and someone shows and you leave it'll actually alert you when a face that's non-recognized <laughs> enters the house wow Ooh. so your your kid has friends over and he's not supposed to or he's supposed to have like a certain friend that you know yeah well if a non-recognized face comes in you you get immediately alerted and then you could like come in over the phone because there's two-way audio and be like yeah. what the hell are you doing you're grounded <laughs> could you hear the voice <laughs> who is that guy <laughs> i told you, you couldn't have your girlfriend over so i, I think it's it, it's it's a neat concept um and hopefully they continue to expand on their capabilities the devices are really small and the video is actually rather impressive. Um, so I think, I think, I think it's worth the money if you're interested in doing something like this. The interesting thing would be is if you can tie into like, if this, then that, and based on a door being opened or a, a person not being recognized, you could then take in, take and create a bunch of other actions. Awesome. 
Awesome. Uh, so my awesome thing, I'm actually just starting to tinker with these things. Uh, you know, we kind of, we kind of string a lot of things together here. If anybody has seen the studio or the pictures of the studio, there's a lot going on around here, right? And a lot of stuff we've kind of repurposed. Uh, so I'm trying to err towards the professional side of things a little bit. And, and one thing I've always heard about on the video side are um, black magic um, with their, you know, cards and everything to help, uh, you know, process video. I'm basically looking for inputs at this point. So this is more of a podcasting discussion. Uh, but, uh, and previously it would just be uh, taking a lot of our cameras, a lot of our HD cameras we have around here and just plugging them in with Firewire. Hey, guess what guys? Firewire is freaking dead. <laughs> so yeah, good luck finding Firewire. I'm running into a problem right now. This new laptop over here doesn't have Firewire. I'm not going to have Firewire on the new MacBook that's coming. Uh, there's no Firewire on that computer we got at the beginning of the year for this. Um, they sell they sell a Thunderbolt to Firewire. I'm cable. aware of that, but still, I <laughs> I am if not. You're if you're willing to upgrade your equipment, then you're you're good to go. I'm not happy with my with the dongle problem. Okay, mm -hmm. I have enough problems. I am. Here's a side note. I'm really pissed right now at Sony. Because every camera I have of theirs, there's no, there's no straight output for anything. If I want component video, I have to have an adapter. If I composite, it's got to be an adapter. Everything coming out of these, except for like one of them has an HDMI port, I need these adapters. And the adapters are pushing out bad freaking quality. Like, like mm -hmm. people, people were asking, what kind of camera? This camera you're using can't be good. It's like, no, it's a great camera. It's just a really bad connection for SD. Um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's become a bit of an issue. Um, but that's a whole other side. But no, I've been picking up these uh, black magic uh, cards and devices. Um, it, it, particularly the uh, intensity line. Um, they're really nice if you need to put a pure HDMI signal in or com component video or actually the one... Uh, like I have, oops, like I have right here, the uh, shuttle. Um, this is the USB 3.0 version um, because I, you know, as I mentioned last week, I think my MacBook died uh, and I found myself with a new laptop that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, but, and it had 3.0. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's try this. It's cheaper than the Thunderbolt version. Anyways, uh, my dream is to replace my hardware switcher for wrestling with just a MacBook and maybe a few of these to plug the cameras in. So it's all inclusive, you know, um, and then now that will be my switcher. Uh, that's the idea. We'll see how that goes. I want to do some testing before we completely go for that. Um, but this thing is really nice. Uh, like I said, it's USB three. It, it's something nice and small. I can bring along. Um, I'm, I'm, I te I'm testing a little bit, uh, test a little bit with the laptop. Um, which is an i5 and then the one here which is like a Lenovo i7 that we run this wirecast on and so it's just a little thing like that it comes with its own core because it's kind of a little different end on it for I don't know if this is a general USB 3 thing it's a, like um, a little looks almost like a little house uh yeah yeah the ends... that's the that's like what they put on a printer really this thing Oh, no, they've modified it for three. Yeah, it's a little bit modified from what you usually <clears throat> get on the other end of a USB I don't know if just for extra throughput or what um, maybe, maybe it's a power line or something like that. Um, and, and it's nice cause you can plug just about any video that you could think of. There's S video and, and com composite video on this. Um, I would recommend if you're somebody that's looking to get into Twitch TV, uh, this, the, the intensity, uh, shuttle here is probably a really nice option for you because you can plug in any console to this. How well does it keep up with the frame rate? This is where I haven't gotten to that part of the testing yet. But the idea is this will take a lot of the processing off of your processor. So you don't need, I think you won't need a super high end one. Or um, like for instance, I've noticed, and maybe I'll test this a little bit. Sometimes I'll get dropped frames coming over Firewire uh, on my Mac. Uh, so maybe if I use this instead, it'll be you know a little stronger you know, signal going through, it'll take off some of that processing versus hard drive, you know, et cetera. And it's supposed to work with any editing software. Um, this one is nice because it does actually have an in and an out. So if you want to output directly to another source or mm -hmm. TV or something like that, um, I'm thinking particularly for these guys, um, we have a situation with one of our clients where they have a giant screen while we're doing the wrestling show. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I before had to do a switch box and have, uh, you've seen the kind of splitter box I have here to go to all of, you know, the TV and, and you know, back out to you guys' uh, hangouts and everything. Um, instead, just push everything through this. And that's one more point I don't need to split off, you know, because it's already going to go into the computer where I need to capture and switch. And I'll push through to, you know, whatever output. And maybe I'll, it'll just be like, this will just be the wide shot. And that's all everybody gets. Maybe, you know, it, it may have to change as far as that goes, but it, it's still it's still going to be kind of it's going to apply to a lot of different situations. Now, here in the studio, because I, I had the shuttle model, uh, particularly for this, because this is this is something I needed to do. Chachi plays this weekend because I, I have this uh, the Windows machine doesn't have any firewires. I need to get my hardware switcher into it so we can wirecast out and broadcast for 24 hours. Um, but I also picked up the Intensity Pro, I believe is the other model, which is the card version of it. Um, all it has, it has a breakout with all, with, you know, everything you would need. It, it basically does just about everything here. It has the ins and outs. It's just in a card form, has a, a crazy, the craziest breakout cable you've ever seen. Because it has in and outs for all, for these, all these colors here. <laughs> All these colors for component and composite and RCA, it has breaking off of one thing, in and out. And then it has HDMI's in and out. What's that cable look like? Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you. I'll, oh, it's I'll like, it, it almost looks like the old Mac video connector. Yeah, it's just a giant MIDI, mm -hmm. something like that. And there's another one extreme, which it looks like it's kind of the same concept where they have the breakout um, on the box, so you don't have to have this giant box in comparison. Um, but... It's, it's this is kind of like your all inclusive solution for video, and you see it will work for both Mac, uh, uh, Final Cut, and, and uh, Premiere. Um, so, but does it integrate as like the, like you were talking about like the switching component? Can you switch on the fly while you're recording? Well, your I stuff? think this is this is where the test is going to come in um, because I'm going to need one of these for every input. Oh, you can't switch live across input types. So. No, no, it's not like I can put. You know, it's not like I can plug in two different inputs here and and it switches. Well, could you plug in device. like an HDMI and an S video? I think you pick one. From you what I'm one. seeing with the software, I, I think you you just pick. This is our input right now, and that's it. Okay. Um, and it has to be very exact. It seems to be very temperamental. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out the kind of the nuances of what goes on there. Like I said, S video was the one I got to get working so far. Um, but we have a few days to figure that out. Uh, but here in the studio, what I'm looking to do, you guys know we do the Hangouts uh, and everything. And, and especially, like, I know on Mac computers I've been having an uh, issue. We use Desktop Presenter. So it brings whatever's on video over the network and has, like, a virtual camera thing. So I wanted uh, some of those or maybe some, some cameras if we bring them into the studio. I just want more inputs, basically. Mm -hmm to go directly into the computer. That's why I bought a tower. That's why I had to buy a Windows machine. Because I want a tower that I can throw cards in so I can have real pure inputs instead of the software hodgepodge thing. You know, I, I mean, at one point I was, I was plugging a camera switcher into another camera just so FireWire would go into the computer. <laughs> you know, like at one time I had another hardware switcher and I'm switching on Wirecast. It was insane. Um, so I'm trying to consolidate all that stuff. Um, so ideally I'll have an HDMI so I can take like, you know, one of these computers with HDMI outs and just plug right in. So your FireWire will be, or I'm sorry, your Skype or, or Hangout will look just as good as it does on the computer. Cool. Pure, straight pure. Um, so that's kind of the idea there. So, I mean, really, if, if you're kind of stepping that next level of video editing or broadcasting or, or something like that, um, these definitely look in this intensity line. It, it's, I've heard great things about it. Um, and uh, if all these tests work out, um, I think I want to be, um, <laughs> I'm going to have a bunch of these by the end of the year. Uh, if if uh, my plans work out, and I, this, this diagram of stuff in my head works out. So. Uh, so check them out, uh, blackmagicdesign.com if you want to check out those kinds of products too. And, and I found these on Newegg and they're on Amazon and everything. They're pretty too. pricey? This is $200 retail. Well, that's not bad. Same with the card. Um, <clears throat> they get a little higher, like I said, for Thunderbolt. Like I think they're Intensity Extremes, um, which I think are more made for being portable because they're more, um, they're a solid piece of aluminum, aluminum versus this is plastic. 
Um, so I think it's more for like, that's the thing you take to shoot, to shoot, to shoot, to shoot, because mm-hmm. it can take a little bit of a beating. Um, those go up to maybe 250, 300, I think at the top end. So again, you get a bump up for being Thunderbolt. Mm-hmm. So you, but you get a huge speed increase too. Yeah, but you just need enough to do the video. What's the bit rate on H? Uncompressed, uncompressed HD video is not small. That's true. That's true. Because that's pushing uncompressed. That's why I wonder. That's why I was asking. Have you played with <clears throat> with it yet? Because that's the one that I was looking at. That little box that they have for doing like it's meant kind of for the Twitch type of thing, where it brings in your Xbox over the, the box. Uh, El Elgato one. Yeah. Yeah. And that, which I think is more or less the same concept. Yeah, but that gives you like a three second delay mm. when the video comes in because it sends it in uncompressed. And then your computer has to process a huge amount of video data. Well, I think the whole point is then this is doing the processing so it comes on the fly. And that's why I'm going to look. Because if I'm getting a delay from this, I'm going to have a little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. Especially if I'm mixing that with, like, you know, the camera you guys are on right now and plus this other stuff. If everybody's off sync for a couple seconds, it's going to look weird. Mm -hmm. So I got to make sure those those sources kind of of work out a little bit. So, awesome. So... Uh, first of all, hey, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor. I know you got you're prepared over there. Slice on <laughs> Broadway. Oh, yeah, there it is. Slice on <laughs> Broadway, providing meals for our. Uh, you know, we're, got, we're we're a no hangout night here at the Awesome Cast. It's a rarity. It is a rarity. I love it. Everybody's in studio. Look at this. No headphones. Sometimes. Nice. We have some, ears. Yeah, you don't have to wear Look headphones, ears. of course. Um, <laughs> and it, it takes a little bit of the technical bit out of it, and we uh, we get to. Uh, I, th- I think sometimes you have better conversations. It's better flow when everybody's it's face a, to face. It, mm-hmm. it is a lot easier, especially I was realizing last week with no feed coming back at me. Mm-hmm. I had no like cue on when I could try to interject mm-hmm. or anything like that. And plus there's like a second delay mm-hmm. and everything like that. Mm-hmm. It, it's really nice. I love that we're able to do that. But, um, you know, it's a necessity. I can to be touch able- chill you touch <laughs> I mean, it's a necessity to get you know a lot of the people involved because uh, if everybody had to be in one place at one time, we wouldn't be doing half the stuff we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not everybody's going to travel. To, you know, Mike joins us from the freaking Bronx, for yeah. instance. Yeah. Uh, Eamon joins us from Texas, but but it's great to uh, get people in the studio here and get them fed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Obviously, we don't work for free. Now we work for pizza. Uh-huh. So thanks, Slice on Broadway. Check them out, sliceonbroadway.com here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, down in Beachview, and a new location coming up in Carnegie. And we're working on some things. We might be doing some other uh, cool things here in the future, so keep an ear out for that. So uh, now that your mouth full, your mouth is full, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to talk about Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. So It is Sunday, people. It is Sunday. Your mom did a lot for you <laughs> don't forget your mom on mother's all day. that birth in a net mm-hmm. are you getting your mom a tech gift mm-hmm. sorry i swallowed pizza <laughs> <laughs> hey sure eat this piece of pizza and i'll talk to us thank you um actually i think i'm getting my mom the fitbit and i know we've discussed it and i've seen it personally that it's kind of technologically flawed in some regards but it's a good motivator and I think that's to me would be worthwhile money wise. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I've talked to her about it and it's something she's interested in and she'd actually would consider. Uh, plus it comes in pink, which is her favorite color, <laughs> which is an added bonus. Thank you very much, Fitbit. Um, but uh, it's I think it's nice because it, it'll encourage her to be active. Um, even, like I said, if, even if it's not 100 percent perfect, it doesn't really matter as long as it's giving her that motivation to keep moving, to try to get more steps. And uh, she has an iPhone, so she can easily keep track of things on her app mm-hmm. and um, be, be able to use it. And I, I think to even just to see how much activity she's a, a nurse in a pediatric emergency room and to see how much I'm curious on my behalf to see how active she is during her day, like how many steps, how, how far is she going in her day? Mm-hmm. I can't imagine. But I, I think even just the having that extra motivation and like I said, the pink and it's it's something she'd be willing to wear. And not to say that the other colors aren't, you know, attractive, but it's it's something that she likes and it plays into, like I said, any, anything that will motivate anybody to move, I don't have a problem with. Definitely. I, you know, I just came from a, um, uh, did, on Friday, did a uh, lifestyle health uh, conference. And a lot of it's talking about, there's a lot of stories of, you know, especially older Mm-hmm. ladies and people you know uh just being active 
like staves off a lot of that other mm -hmm. all those other problems mm -hmm. you know like my one grandfather he's like 85 and he's walking and he was walking two miles and he's trying to get back out to because he's had some issues mm -hmm. um and surgeries and stuff but um but i mean he definitely looks better than like some people i see at like 70 or mm -hmm. 60 sometimes um it makes a difference it makes a huge difference and 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 this was another thing that was brought up uh matt keener uh, was there talking to a TEDx uh, Grandview mm -hmm. actually person? I got to talk to him a little bit okay, again. Cool. Um, but uh, you know about this quanti quantitative data idea, and, and this is like the forefront of it. I think mm -hmm. it's the best example out there. Missy has one. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually turned on the you know you can you do uh, the Fitbit app on your phone, mm -hmm. and um, at least on the newer iPhones, you can use the M whatever chip, yeah, and it's M it's is doing, the M seven. I think. Oh, I, you it's know, the A7. I think, I think it is the M7 as well. Is it the M7 too? I thought it was the M4 or something. I don't know. There's another anyway. chip in here that's like doing just doing motion and it's mm -hmm. not waking up your phone. So I just turn it on just to see what happens. Mm -hmm. See see what I am doing, you know, which mm -hmm. is not very well. Um, but it, but you know, it, it's nice seeing a track. You can at least start with that, mm -hmm. you know. But but even just seeing your sleep and everything with this device kind of makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Awesome. Now, Sheila, I know you had a different aspect of this when we were talking about so this I was, idea. I've run into problems buying family members tech gifts sometimes because you end up supporting them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I was actually now thinking about it. My mom recently had a machine, the OS crashed on it, um, and she hadn't kept a backup. So she did get a hard drive, and I'm going to set up kind of like an on-prem sync solution where it'll back up a lot of her data hmm. but maybe i should be getting her something like a carbonite subscription or some kind of online additional google drive i think sorg we were talking about google drive mm -hmm. maybe get her a large google drive account that way it can then sync a lot of that content that she a lot of it we got back because it was actually mainly photos that were passed across multiple phones and she still has the phones like i had to pull data off of a blackberry storm yes <laughs> wow well, so favorite? luckily she had like anywhere that she had taken pictures she had the content mm -hmm. um and that's the majority of the content i think that she did have um i think i did have a she had a thumb drive that i used to migrate data from an old laptop to the new laptop so we had all that data but <clears throat> thinking online backup subscription hmm. it's not a bad idea i like that idea I mean, that's yeah. something that's probably not going to break easily. and especially well <laughs> i don't know i have a i i have somebody that i've helped with that and and it seems like it's breaking every so often i don't can, can you get some kind of like email alert like if you haven't synced or backed up you will a if it's set up with your email because I, I i one of my uh on location people uh a, a hard drive failed now here's the problem. I set everything up before they still they still had the four gigabyte uh, limit on Backblaze files, so it didn't back up all the captured videos. But still, there's like three hundred of a terabyte drive. There was about three hundred gigabytes I was able to recover. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, you know, I, I still have the drive. I'm hoping I can kind of recover it and try to get those big files. It's not a big deal. I don't think it's anything I need to get back to. Plus, we have all the DV tapes. Anyways, um, so you will get an email saying, "Hey, we haven't seen your drive for." seven days that's cool make okay. sure it's mm -hmm. connected so it lets you know there's a problem um so if you set it up with your email address that'll be fine now they may also have pop-ups happening on their computer so you'll get a lot of hey why does this backblaze thing and why does it say i have to do and and mm -hmm. then, then you know to interject right and hopefully that's not it's not a recurring problem with the computer or something that you have to keep going back mm -hmm. to um she only has 128 gig ssd so it's not like it's not it's bad. No, no, it's not bad. That's not versus the, <laughs> you know, uh, one person I work with has at least three drives connected at all times. And I know if something goes off and back on, or you unplug something and plug it back in, even if it's the right way, it'll put a two by it when it's technically redetected, mm -hmm. and it sees it as a different drive, and it'll keep getting the errors. And if uh, it's somebody who never restarts their computer, they'll never redetect it as the original drive. Okay. And it keeps reminding them, hey, we don't see your drive. Hey, what is this? Hey, hey, what's going on? Um, so that can be an ongoing problem, too. But generally, if you set it up, and you know it's a person that doesn't do those kind of weird things like that, they're mm -hmm. just doing their computer, and da 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 Because that's the first thing I always say to people. They're like, did you back things up? Did you put them anywhere else? Did you do anything? Uh, like hard drives will fail. They could fail in the first first week. You never know. Um, when 
my grandfather. He got that iMac, and mm-hmm. I saw it was from 2007. I'm like, <laughs> you're putting everything on Google Drive mm-hmm. because holy crap, I don't trust this hard drive. It's like, you know, so, God, how old is that? Four, five, six, seven years old. <laughs> I'm not going to trust this hard drive and mm-hmm. all of your stuff on there. And I know you're going to have a huge problem if it all goes away right now. So we're not going to do that at all. <laughs> um, now for my mom, I've been trying to, she, we talked about a little bit, she's more technically inclined. She's a, she's actually an AutoCAD designer and still practicing and everything. So she's not unfamiliar with computers, mm-hmm. you know, um, so I've been trying to figure out, I know she's been diving a little bit into Roku's and stuff, but I don't know how much she uses them, mm-hmm. but I do know she likes dog videos. Her Facebook tells me that all the time. <laughs> so I feel like something like a Chromecast may help her as far as that goes. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that idea, she's very versed in her iPhone. I think very good at her iPhone. Um, so maybe something like like a Chromecast. And it's one of those, it's a $35 shot in the dark. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if it goes in a knife drawer, you're you're not going to be too too mad about it, you know, versus I've, I bought a TiVo for my dad. Mm-hmm. And it was in the, it, it was a direct TV TiVo. Oh. Never left the box. Oops. I love my TiVos. Never left the box. I've expanded the TiVo family. <laughs> we have two TiVos and a TiVo Mini. Aww. And it is it is a wonderful, wonderful technology. Mm-hmm. But never got into it. They, they never got into the DVR. I can tell you, Mama Dutters has a Google Chrome, or the Chrome cast and she loves it and she uses it and she has no problem i mean she, she like i said she's versed with her iphone and she yeah. watches videos and she watches she watches this show and she'll say oh i watched your show and i was like oh really that's cool like how <laughs> did you do that and she but she knows how to do that and she she enjoys watching and even netflix yeah which mm-hmm. is nice too even that idea that you can just send tabs mm-hmm. you know and, and there's so many options like the mm-hmm. photo wall we talked about a few mm-hmm. weeks ago um i mean there's these little games and stuff and it's only going to get better and i feel like again you already know how to use it because you have a phone you just need to look for that button just look for that button mom you mm-hmm. know that, that little that little chromecast button mm-hmm. and just click that and it should work you know because she's not going to have things versus me i have a oh what wi-fi in my house is my thing on and ah, mm-hmm. it's getting a little weird you know uh versus versus like, oh now i picked up this other tablet on android and now i'm doing stuff she does she has one phone mm-hmm. she has one wi-fi <laughs> it'll work just fine she doesn't even get cell reception where she's at you know it, it's it's it, it just I don't know. I think it would make a lot of sense. Now I think I'm going to get one. I think I'm actually going to get one for this weekend. Ooh, do it. <laughs> Just to see what happens. Mm-hmm. I feel like she already has a Roku and a Western Digital box. And I'm not sure she's used either one of them. Like Western, I, I've never used the Western Digital box. Mm-hmm. I know it can like crawl your network for a lot of content. Does it have like a lot of apps on there? Like Netflix I don't know. I've never and... seen it. She's just like, <laughs> I bought the I bought this uh, WD drive. I'm like, why didn't you get a Roku like I told you to? <laughs> She's like, well, it was there. It was uh, so much. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, but why? You know, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much they're going to use it. They have cable. They have all that other stuff. But who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um so uh let us know anybody in the chat uh anybody else on social media let us know what you get your mother or what will you definitely not get your mother that's a good <laughs> what's question the, what's, <laughs> the, what's, the, what's the worst idea for you to get your mother for this like I, mm. that's a good question that's an even better question though what would you get your mother what would i not get my mom what would I not trust her with? <laughs> I think that's well, the it's question. a lot of stuff. Yeah, like I, there's a lot of people. I mean, the general gift giving or at least suggestion for a lot of family is please get a Mac. Please do my me a favor and get yourself a Mac. See, because... and, and I, I view like a lot. Sometimes I think for a lot of my family members, it would be a thousand times easier to get like an iPad Mini or an iPad, mm-hmm. something along those lines. Because I know a lot of things that people are doing nowadays are just, I want to surf the web. I want to check Facebook. Mm-hmm. I want to get my email. And that's fine. And that, and, and that's fine. Or a Chromebook. It, it just, like I would go with a Chromebook. Yes, yeah. yes absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Cause I think too many times your windows machine, even your Mac, it's made mm-hmm. to do all of these things. Even if you bought the cheap one, mm-hmm. it's made and the software is there to do all these things that you're never going to use why not just eliminate that Croft and here, just have this thing. 
mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, a, it's a very appliance kind of mindset. To mm-hmm. this. this is the thing where I do the, the, the Facebooking. That's it. Because mm-hmm. it might be all they do. Mm-hmm. They might just live in that Facebook app and that's it. And why spend $2,000 on an iMac to do that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, even I'm looking at my grandfather, and he, he, like I said, he has the Mac, he has the PC. He only has the PC because Quicken, his version of Quicken will only work on it. Mm. And the Mac is specifically, he scans sheet music, converts it, makes music to send to his choir, which is amazing. He's in his 80s, and he's doing this stuff. Um, and the whole ordeal is to make sure he can do this so he can be a help to his choir. Doesn't do much else with it, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um but, you know, that's tremendous, you know. And I'm glad he didn't buy a brand new $2,000 iMac. He's fine with a 2007 iMac. <laughs> so. As long as he's getting updates and, yeah. I mean, it's secure, he I is. wouldn't he is. worry about it too much at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I and mean, that, 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 that's always the biggest thing. Speaking of Windows. So I got this thing sitting over here. I don't know if I can. I guess I can disconnect it. Yeah, I guess it's safe to disconnect it. I was going to try <laughs> to use it now. for a thing, but so I got I got this thing. Look at this thing. <laughs> this is a it's an Asus. Uh, so it's nice that I have a laptop that matches my my Nexus tablet and make, um, and it kind of feels it too. Um, so window it's a Windows eight well now eight point one uh, uh, notebook. It's got the touchscreen. So you can test updates on it before you update. Yes, I can test the updates on. I know. I know. I was in this. <laughs> We're a tech show. Listen, listen. I was in this whole thing with Kraus on why I haven't updated my my desktop computer that I'm running Wirecast on because I'm like I'm really afraid that something will happen because it's an older version of Wirecast and they're not going to update it for the new versions of Windows, Mavericks. Already had a problem with Mavericks. Killed mm-hmm. it. That's really what spurred getting a new computer. Um, because I was sharing that one, that whole story. Um, and it was this whole thing about, you should update. I'm like, no, I won't. I, it does Wirecast. It does this. It has to do nothing else. I'm not worried about security. I'm not going online with it. Nothing else. And I know it keeps, and I know it drives me nuts when it tells me to tap to make this thing happen in the corner. And I'm like, this is not a touch screen. <laughs> And that's me fixed and update. He one. tells me this is all is all fixed. Okay, but so I, so I did update this thing, and I I love what Windows does with the touch. I love you know the ability to say to to reach up and do something because I hate the trackpad so bad right now. Mm-hmm. You, you, the MacBook spoils you. Oh, you hate the trackpad on that. Device. I hate the yeah. trackpad on this thing. And okay. I have not met a Windows trackpad that I've liked. Mm-hmm. And never. Never. Um, I think Krauss has it. What mod do you know what model that is? This? I can I don't know. I, I think it's on the back. Hey, other thing. Why don't we have a product key on the bottom here? This was really bad Does to do. Is that a removable ba- movable battery? No. That's it. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Mm-hmm. Um then it's built in to the device and you restore with the restore thing. Because I, I had to go find the app that would pull it from the registry key. If you go into like the control panel and say restore this back to factory. It would just do it for me. It just does it for you. Yeah. You know what? Now I think about it. I don't think I had to put it in when I. Yeah, it freaked it. me out on the Surface Pro. I'm like, I want to re- I have to rebuild this because none of the drivers are working. Yeah, instead I got, I mean, I just and, got this little Windows logo laughing at me here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, what do I do with this? And thing? Windows in here, interestingly enough, Windows 7 devices, after a while, they started putting it under the removable battery. That makes sense, because um, when I did go to restore my wife's gateway laptop, again, around 2009, 10-ish, um, the key had wiped off. Mm-hmm. And I had already Oops. started reformatting it. <laughs> so that was a little bit of an issue. Uh, this is actually a Q31L, if that tells you anything. And he said uh, his, is a, his is an Acer. Oh, Acer. Yeah, sorry. Well, it, looks, it looks almost identical It pretty to much his. is. You know, somebody else, who else had an Acer laptop? Uh, actually, uh, the guy that comes in here earlier for the Journal, Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast, mm-hmm. he has an Acer Chromebook. And I was looking at it, and I was like, oh, he has an ace. Oh, wait, that's the wrong company. Um, but no, uh, Touch, love it. Uh, Windows 8, I I got into it with the Windows Twitter account on Friday. 
I don't know if you saw that. No, I did not. Um, because I was just making a lot. Because Friday was one of the big days I needed a nice laptop because I was sitting there doing social media for a conference all day long. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I need something that's going to work. That's not going to be slow. I could bring my old like Linux 2005 laptop, but we know how that does when it's doing a lot. And I'm like simulcasting on three different platforms and everything. Um, and so I'm just kind of commenting on, oh, I really like how it does this, but I wish it would do this better or something like that. One, I do feel four gigabytes of RAM is not enough. Not enough. Even if you're a mild, you, you need to go eight. Really? A lot of machines you can't even get eight in. A lot of laptops. Really? Because depending on depending on the I laptop feel here. it. I feel it a lot on here. Maybe it's because I'm using Chrome. Probably because I'm using Chrome. Chrome but <laughs> Chrome's a peg. Um, but uh, the gestures coming off of like an iPad, and again, like eight point one, it actually starts telling you how to use it. Which it didn't mm -hmm. in the first one. It was like, I'm really, I, I, I installed an update and then it tells me how to use the operating system that I should have known this entire time. Um, I do like that. I noticed um, yesterday on the trackpad, the slides from the right and left and stuff work just the same as if you did it on the screen. Excuse me, it did it on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I, I don't use enough of the actual apps. Um, like, like I have Facebook on there and I use Google and I was playing a little bit with Wirecast. Uh, so I, I don't think I got much into it. Now it is nice. Uh, cause I set up my, uh, Missy's account on it and she was playing with it last night. And I, I think she's going to take to it like nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, she's already using a new office cause she got the office 365. Um, hmm. And speaking of Max, apparently a hard drive died, and we might not have a guest for a later show. I just found out, <laughs> um, so we'll deal with that later. Um, but generally, I uh, I don't know. I, I like it again. Just I, I don't like the hardware. I can't wait to get back to a MacBook trackpad. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, the other thing, again, I, and I talked about this before. I think when I got onto the Android device, it's super easy because just about everything I use is on everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, Google Drive, Dropbox, this, uh, this, mm -hmm. there's a version of this, you know, and I'm up and running and everything's on the web. The only thing I run into a problem with is uh, I need to download this YouTube video so I can convert to MP3 and put it back up for uh, the podcast version of this. Oh, I don't have compressor. So I'm hoping that Mac takes a lesson from Microsoft in this respect, which Microsoft took a lesson from Google in this respect. Mm-hmm. In Windows 8.1, they started this thing where when you move from machine to machine, the majority of everything also moves with you. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're talking about, like, reinstalling applications, or you like Chrome because you don't really have to reinstall plugins because they all come back. That's actually the way apps from the App Store work in Windows 8.1. I've noticed. Oh, well, I know I got my desktop. You from your, the computer down here. Yeah, you get your instance. desktop, but now you get... Uh, Missy was <clears throat> had her office. Right. For instance. So everything everything kind of comes down now. I think depending on the device and the hard drive size and whatnot, you may have to go into the app store and stay. There's actually a button that says, like, my apps, and you can actually just say, install all. And it mm -hmm. brings them all down. Okay, so it doesn't automatically go... Because I would have it a depends problem. depends on the device. I'm thinking of, like... Or to install I'm on thinking first like use. three or four years from now when all these machines down here, <laughs> instead of slapping XP on everything, and now they're all on like this account, and what if I'm putting it on an older machine and it wants to bring down all this hefty stuff, so I can actually say, no, no, no not, not right. all that stuff. We're still the same account. Yeah, yeah, we're still, we're still me, but we're not this version of me. Mm -hmm. I can create a different version of me for this computer, right. which is like a studio version of me. But I guess at that point, I just have a studio Microsoft account that would just, oh my God. <laughs> There you go. You have a studio account that says I have the uh, Ma Microsoft app version of Wirecast and you, this and that and the other thing. And, and it's it's almost like you've, you've imaged every computer. The only thing account. that you get into trouble with there is if you're paying for licensing for certain software. Of course. Like I'm, uh, Adobe stuff came right down after I, but I have to go find their Creative Cloud software. Mm -hmm. and then it comes down. You know, it, it, It's not in the system yet. You know, mm -hmm. I have to go download somebody else's system to get into it. But once that happens, you're good. But I only have two computers on my license. It's nice that I have a Windows machine has Photoshop on it. And I was good to go. 
mm-hmm. you know, but when I get that new MacBook, I got to kill this one off because I need to have it on my desktop Mac too, for instance. So, but I don't know. It, it, we're, we're, we're so close, so close to that promise lane, right? Mm-hmm. Um, of, of just having the, I, I click a button and just everything comes in. You know, like I said, this whole, like, that's one re- other reason why I put her account on this. And I also started an account on her old Windows 7 laptop. So I told her, I was like, I want to get to this point where if we have a thing, like, coming down here to the studio, we're going to an event, um, and I need this specific hardware to cover this task and say, you know, okay, so you're going to have to use this one. I want to the point, get to the point where any one of us can pick up any one of said devices and just be able to go regardless. Mm -hmm. Like I could just log in it'll update all the latest stuff on my Google drive and I'm good to go, you know? Um, And I think it's, it's really getting there. So instead we're getting this point where we kind of have a fleet of different laptops and we're, you know, we can just kind of pick up and go. So, awesome. So that's my Windows 8. I can't wait for my MacBook to come. And it's going to be a Retina uh, MacBook, so I'll have some commentary probably uh, over the weekend. I don't know if I'm going to have it in time to do Chachi Plays this weekend, which we will be doing Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, ChachiPlays.com. You can get the feed right here if you're watching us live starting at 7 p.m. Um, that will be a blast, and I'll be... T- I'm sure talking about all kinds of technical issues there too. Uh, so, uh, so definitely if you haven't yet donate, please, please. You saw the video at the beginning of the show. If you're catching this later, heck, don't just donate play. Yeah. Get a spot, get in on a tournament. I'm in the Mario Kart tournament. I know that's filled up now, but there's still Tetris and there's still street fighter, street fighter. Oh, with street fighter was a blast last year. If you, if you want to get into a good tournament, that's a fun one. Oh to yeah. Do. Oh yeah. That was yeah. very it's 25 competitive. Bucks very competitive um there's uh several uh available slots those usually full, fill up here in the last week so uh, go to chachiplays.com mm-hmm. and check that out um uh, right now 10 p.m <laughs> through 3 a.m is still open and then we do uh 18 holes of golf with uh we we sports at 4 a.m so if you want to come out and uh, uh participate in that mm-hmm. um and wow we're actually uh, we filled out a good bit of saturday but the late saturday needs filled up too so please please get in on that if you haven't yet um i know people probably just have to figure out when their schedules mm-hmm. are laying and everything so oh thanks to you jagoff you yeah. gave away i think two spots wow very nice so um so uh so thanks to you jagoff.com shout out to them john has been on the show uh, i think a couple of times now so um so let's take a peek at some stories this week we had a few things going on um uh, the biggest thing, I don't know. I don't know. What, what caught you guys' interest this week? I was, I found, good. Okay, you first. Oh, yeah. Um, I found this interesting article. Uh, the police are now using Pinterest. I found this on NPR. It was um, that they are now using Pinterest to, uh, some of them are using it to find and return lost items, maybe things that have uh, popped up. And uh, for example, in the picture there, there's uh, several items that they want need huh. identified from that they've confiscated from crime scenes and That's cool. returned. Uh, they're also offering tips to parents, maybe something to look into, like if um, different <clears throat> ki- things that they should be concerned with, maybe if their kids are on drugs or how to tell, um, or just like any sort of safety tips on there too. But they're now on Pinterest, a lot of them. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially since parents, at least mothers are exactly who's going to be on there looking Mm -hmm. at this kind of stuff and that's a good way to figure out what to get your mother for mother's day you look at her pinterest account Ooh, Ooh. i use that trick all the time with my wife i didn't think about that i don't know if my mom's on pinterest you know now we're all saying your mom that's i got my mom on pinterest for for that reason (laughs) (laughs) yeah anyone that you want to buy gifts for get them on pinterest see missy's on pinterest but i think it's all big goods Mm, that doesn't Mm. work yeah it doesn't work out too well (laughs) <laughs> you lose. Hmm. Um, I'll have to take a look at our Pinterest now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was pretty cool how they're um, using it because, I mean, everybody knows about Twitter and Facebook and, and Instagram and other sites that um, the different law are, um, arms of the law are using. But uh, Pinterest, it threw me off. I was shocked by that. I was surprised. But it makes perfect sense that they would use it in this capacity. Definitely. Definitely. Sheila, what is this LG Chrome all-in-one? So this is what <laughs> one of the things that we were talking about. What would you buy for someone? This is what I would actually buy to put in my kitchen <laughs> if it had a touchscreen. 
So L LG has a Chrome all in one. So you get the monitor, which which the monitor is also the computer, mm -hmm. and then it has a keyboard and mouse, and it's three hundred and fifty bucks, and it's a twenty one inch display. Jeez, that's amazing. So I mean, it'd be it'd be worth like if it did touch screen, like bringing up Pinterest and recipes. Yeah, like I view this as a, it's like the perfect solution for that area of the house where you would want a computer, but you it might dirty or something might happen or, to or it or maybe an ipad there's no pl good place to put it right mm -hmm. yeah so I, this to me is like a really good solution for that I, i'm trying to create a kiosk in my house because i want to be able to check sports scores or the weather or whatever real quick uh, you're not going to sit here i wouldn't sit here anyway and type out a powerpoint presentation or or Ooh. or doc this is actually but, this this could be nice. We you know what this this really I think you just solved the problem for one of my clients. because uh, <laughs> we've been talking about like, oh, maybe we'll get a Chromebook or something and it could be a kiosk. They because uh they went to our lobby to have you walk in and we have all this content. Mm -hmm. All this content, right? Mm -hmm. Um and videos and, and, and everything. Um and just he wanted people to be able to just come in and they'll touch and they can bring up a thing. No, this doesn't have a touch screen. Oh, this is not a touch screen. It's not a touch screen. Oh, that's what I was saying. Yeah. I, that's the only thing I wish this had. Of course, it would knock the price up, and I would, but I would be okay with that. You know, uh, so so but, it is all in one as far as that's still that still I think solves a lot of problems. So mm -hmm. this is like like an iMac of Chromebooks, mm -hmm. right? Chrome boxes. And it, it, I mean, three hundred fifty bucks, and it has the like I said the twenty one point six inch display it's not bad it's not bad you get that you get that you lock it down I mean, i'm talking even for the public side you lock it down with its own account there's nothing else um and it just points at those videos you make your own html oh man that could be good that, that's nice you know what room that'd be great for hmm. bathroom i'd worry about it getting steamed well well, you're making it into a touch screen. Why can't I make it? Yeah, you can, there you go. There, that, perfect. <laughs> We're going to modify it the way we want it. But this is a habit right there in front of the toilet. Yeah, just... there's already TVs in people's bathrooms. I remember like there was a big like phase that I know people went through back back in the day. Mm -hmm. Back in the 80s and 90s, everyone had to put a phone in their bathroom. Yeah. And this was before cordless phones. Yeah. Like it was a big thing to have phone hookups in the bathroom and now we all have a phone in the bathroom <laughs> Yay! literally and slash, my own tv look slash tv <laughs> slash game console slash Social whatever media. else you do on there <laughs> reading comic books reading the internet things. of things yeah, yeah exactly the, the entire internet of things mm -hmm. exactly wow and I always now I'm thinking of those hotel rooms whenever you stay somewhere and you're like, there's a phone in the bathroom. <laughs> this is amazing. This is so futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> who am I calling from Where, the bathroom? <laughs> I don't know. Who do I need to call right now right that now, I can't wait for me to flush? Oh, um, speaking of which, um, this, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever seen my life proof case, which I, I like to just yes, do yes. things like that. <laughs> And, and, and towards toward cringe and, um, and and threaten to to dip in my drink no i did i didn't threaten i put it in your water oh yes and Eaton park dropped it right in his water you can actually life proof case i have not tested this theory because i'm actually afraid of facetime um but you can call somebody in the shower can i see yeah. can i touch yeah touch it drop it i don't care <laughs> I i'm always it. interested in like how what it what the bulk it adds mm -hmm. That's pretty nice. And, oh, and it's oh, that's okay. That's the plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, you can actually use it in the shower. From what I've heard, I like I said, I'm afraid of the FaceTime mm -hmm. use in the shower. <laughs> you know, the friend just has to hit the little button, and does you know, it? Does it? Um, it still, covers there. Yeah. Does it work with your fingerprint mm -hmm. still? Cool. How's that? How's that? The still? first, the first rev when the five came out, or the five yeah. S came out. Yeah. They didn't have a life proof that worked with the fingerprint sensor. Yeah. Huh. Like, but now they do. Mm -hmm. So it's covered, but you can still kind of read through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I drop it all the time. I like to watch iPhone users cringe when I drop it. Because it's just like, oh my gosh, what did you just do? And I do all the time. For, who was it? Was it Riz that has that? Yeah. But he doesn't have the bottom part, yeah, the so he can't actually off. submerge it. Yeah. Like the bottom port uh, cover is missing. So the, you, if you guys can't see on the video, there's actually like caps <clears throat> over um, oh, the parts wow. you would use, like like the like the uh, data port and the uh, microphone. Mm -hmm. 
and everything else is just kind of windowed that you would be using like the camera and you can hear through it pretty well yeah, and... no problems i, I was surprised uh, i'm actually i i love this case i i've gotten a fair amount of dropsies out of it and uses out of it uh the only disadvantage is, is you do have a film over your camera so you will it kind of i'm mean, the pictures aren't, aren't not, it's not terribly impacted but you can tell that there's a film over the camera but like i say i do this all the time and <laughs> Watch Sorg just watch one of these days. She's gonna be like, and I just do this, and I've cracked my phone before, so I'm I'm <laughs> I'm very aware. That's after I Ooh. after I bought my my iPad, the iPad One, you know, and spent half mm-hmm. a grand on it and everything. Mm-hmm. I dropped it down here on the concrete. Ooh. And I'm like, oh my god, I didn't just do that. I didn't get Apple Care or anything. Oh my god. <laughs> and what just, would be bad though is if somehow it landed with the front down and there was something pointy yeah are you challenging me i'm gonna find something pointy <laughs> that's the way well that's what happens to me because i have this little bumper thing going mm-hmm. on and that saves it because you're not actually sliding across anything it's when it falls that right way and there's something sticking up mm-hmm. and that's what got me that's what got me that one time slam it on every corner you can yeah she'll slam it against my my um, MacBook Air and break my MacBook Air, but her phone will be fine. <laughs> That's all that matters is my phone. <laughs> Forget the rest of your stuff. Awesome. You know, you mentioned. Uh, I don't know. I had to mention this. You, you mentioned like putting this in the kitchen. Like I've seen people. Remember the old HP? I mean, I still have these the HP touchscreen mm-hmm. computers. Like I've seen people with those in their kitchen. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I have also seen people with broken iPads in their kitchen, just up on a shelf. That makes sense yeah. too. Yeah. Or the refrigerators with the built-in TVs. Those were a thing. LG did it. Yeah. Well, and Samsung has one that they have a connected fridge that like has like access to Evernote and Twitter mm-hmm. and Epicurious and all kinds of and stuff couple, right like, on the refrigerator. A couple so lists. Here's a funny. side note on that: is there is actually a really good discussion I listened to on I'm sure it was a podcast or something the last few weeks about how we've been building all this software into fridges, etc., mm-hmm. and uh, we're not worried about the security of them. Mm-mm. But then we also have all of this stuff that was built in the cars. That's technology that we built on this technology that was developed on the 70s and all this stuff. And and it's fine, except for now we're connecting Bluetooth and everything. So there's these highly, 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 highly insecure computers and components in our cars that anybody can hijack. Because mm-hmm. you have sensors there just apparently the way they they talk to each other the components in the car they like have a sensor and it looks for this one thing and it broadcasts it and then you have another sensor that reads that and you know is just looking for it and it reads it and, and brings it back through to your odb or your you know whatever the next thing needs mm-hmm. to be but now you can bluetooth and start messing around with that because everything's just openly listening for everything and now your car is completely hackable Hmm. <laughs> this is a problem apparently they're going hmm. to need to get through very very soon especially because even think automate or self-driving cars have all this technology but they're still built on top of 1970s technology that's insecure but uh, i mean so my car i can remotely start but it's coming over the cellular network Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. else what else can come over that cell network but you could say that about a phone Uh, i there's your phone has has things in it to stop anybody from getting past the front door so does the car so my car only try. So when I remote start my car, it's like, and we're gonna get real techy here because I've, I've been bitching about this at work this week. APNS, the way that the the way that you get a pop up alert on your iPhone, mm-hmm. like if you get a Facebook friend request pop up on your phone, Facebook actually has to contact Apple. Apple validates that it is Facebook making the request. Then Apple takes that request and finds your phone in the world of iPhones and iPads and sends down a ping and says, is this really this person? And it says, yes, I am. And then it sends a payload and the payload can only contain text and audio. Hmm. And it, and it has to validate that the person sending the messages, who they, they are, who they say they are. And the end point. So has every to time be that happens, you've done, you've done a round trip yes. to all those places. Every time you see one of those happen. But, and I'm, Remote start is the same way. Mm-hmm. I have to. I have to contact Hyundai. Yeah. Hyundai then uses the cell network to contact the car. Mm-hmm. The car then does validation and says, "Okay, I'm going to." But start. I think I think the problem isn't like that front door thing. Once it, which people can hack through Bluetooth, etc. Right? 
Um, and then there's other things in your phone that stops other you, them from getting through other doors. In this case, it's just if you just get it to broadcast a signal and you can make it think like, I don't know, the brakes are working um, or something like that. It, it, there's there's no other stops. What was that on? Because I'd be interested to listen to it. I'm trying to remember. Because most now. of the because most of the sensors like. Or a one-way sensor. I feel like it was on... Um, it's getting a reading. I feel like it was on Daily Tech News Show. I will almost venture a guess. I bet if you listen to any of the last two Fridays of Daily Tech News Show, because that's when they okay. have a guy from Hack 5 on, okay. um, and that's when they usually get really fun discussions about stuff like that. Um, I'll, I'll try making it to find that for you. But it was it was definitely something that caught my ear in the last few weeks. Yeah, because I'm thinking about a lot of those sensors and like just use the tire pressure sensor the yeah. tire pressure sensor is just getting tire pressure it's not like it can release here's the other air. problem though mm -hmm. is it, it's a tire pressure sig that that was one of the open things because they started i didn't know they started requiring those as, as of 2006 on cars okay i have a 2005 so i'm just under the radar uh, of that so in order for that to work it's sending a signal Again, but is it wireless does it ha i mean it yeah, doesn't have to it's be wireless in, it's in the wheel it's in the part that moves so it needs to wirelessly connect that to somewhere in your your car, and apparently it's not a secure signal. But what are they going to do with the amount of tire pressure you have? Like I said, it's not like it can I don't, then I don't think I don't think it's pressure. a point about that. I think it's, it's it's a point that once you start writing that signal and you can broadcast anything to all these parts of your car that are simply listening to anything mm -hmm. unsecurely, then you can start causing some havoc. There's this whole thing about car hacking they got into. This is just a tip on the iceberg. I might be. I want to go around hacking people's cars. I'm going to go for the podcast. <laughs> this is a thing. This mm -hmm. is a thing. Definitely. I mean, mine's an aftermarket remote starter. Mm -hmm. So. But that's RF. But yeah, I mean um, the same thing yeah. with like a garage door opener. If you okay. you find that signal. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're sitting there making my car run out of gas. So I just start getting <laughs> stuffing it, starting it. Or something it. else, because what yeah. what else can you get into from then? If it's you know, the, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the system works like it's that. It's very very basic. It, it's like you're saying. It's very very basic mm -hmm. in regards to. That's what the hackers look for. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> other interesting technical thing I found this week. Um, there was a good interview with Dana Boyd um, on uh, triangulation on, on the Twit Network, and uh, they were talking about like a lot of. She's a social. Uh, she's a social media. You actually should probably listen to this one. She's a social media. Uh, uh, I don't know, doctorate or something, right? Mm -hmm. PhD or something. Um, but she was talking about some of the things about like how kids are growing up uh, with social media and what this is versus you know what it mm -hmm. used to be and latchkey kids and stuff. But th but this was one we've been talking about the Oculus Rift and how like you know, for instance Missy can't go to 3D movies and some people it doesn't work with Oculus because they, you know they get eye sickness. There's actually um, we don't know how to account in 3D uh, for everyone's eyes genetically in in uh, VR. Like there's like a percentage of people that their eyes aren't shaped the right way. And that's the reason why VR isn't going to work for them. Hmm. And nobody knows how to deal with it. So, I, we, you know, we talk about the people that just like can't work with the, you know, the, the, the 3D glasses. And it, it, it's this is a genetic problem. It's not just a ah, they're weird and they can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's an interesting once they do that, I think maybe maybe VR will finally work. And catch on as long as uh it software doesn't take it over did you hear about that about uh uh john carmack's parent company wants like a stake in it because he develops supposedly he developed some of the stuff there that's in mm -hmm. part of the sdk ridiculous anyways we actually talked about the oculus in the scarehouse podcast oh yeah yeah and, is that uh, the next stage and uh, well yeah it could be <laughs> scare house in your home and, well yeah you know that that could be mm -hmm. very and, much and how things are changing and how um the question is with any sort of technology is what's popular with technology um cat videos and porn like what how are you going to use this and how are you going to turn this into you experiencing things oh this is cool this is what it's like to walk on you know a very tall building well what's it like to fall off a very tall building you know, you're not just like enjoying the experience. You're like, well, maybe what's it feel like to, you know, fall down off this so, building? So and, more terror oh, exploration. Yeah. And whether or not in, in just essentially experiencing these things that you can't in your normal life. And whether or not that's deviant behavior or not. But it, it, yeah. it's, it, there's a lot of avenues that this could take. Wow. 
in, in regard to this. And so, so, so one day is like part of Scarehouse could be I walk into a room and put they put a VR headset on and then oh my god, and it, like that's what you're replacing the 3D glasses part of the middle of the Scarehouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're in this thing. This is what it feels like to fall off a building and die. Oh, but I mean, if you, if you die in VR, do you die in real life? I don't know. You want to find out? <laughs> you I think there's a few more movies that uh, that explore that. Yeah. Well, we now we now we need mo new movies. We can't go in the old technology. That's true. We too. need new movies. That's true too. Tell us what happened. Wow. All right. Um, with that, yes. <laughs> I think that's enough for today. Um, guys, if you want to talk, oh hey, anything upcoming? I don't. I didn't see anything. Um, I, I thought I had it in the news. I thought I had something in there. Oh, so Microsoft scheduled an announcement today for May twentieth. Okay. So keep your eyes peeled on that day. Supposedly a Surface Mini. That's going to be, and you'll, you'll, this may come in, in interesting to you. Um, it sounds like one of the theories about the device is it's going to be based on the ARM processor. So it's not going to run full Windows, but the whole thing is going to be based around note taking. That, like, it's going to be all about, oh, you can run, you can run Windows RT and anything out of the Windows App Store on it. But the whole thing, it sounds like a lot of the platform is going to be around around note taking. Okay. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then as usual, um, you have E th E3s coming up. So there'll be a lot of Xbox announcements and gaming announcements. Um, and then you have WWDC in the beginning of June and Google's um, Google I.O. at the end of June. So June's going to be a the end of May and June's going to be a fun month. It usually, I is. feel like I feel like there's been a huge dry spell the first four months of the year, minus the I mean Microsoft build was. Eh. Mm -hmm. Everybody's busy patching security flaws. <laughs> well, Sem Semantic made some announcement today that antivirus is useless or something. Oh yeah, I've known that the whole time. <laughs> I, I can't remember what they the the when the quote was from like. Uh, what did he say? The quote was from someone at Semantic, and it wasn't. It was like the CIO or the CEO. Yeah, yeah. it was like we're in trouble. Oh my god! Because it was something about uh, antivirus software cannot detect most malware threats. Yes. So why do I even have it? Mm -hmm. uh, there was actually one uh, one discussion uh, the other night. Was uh, uh, so a friend of ours says uh, uh, they tell everybody to uninstall whatever came with their computer antivirus wise and just install a vast is a vast that's what i is I a vast use. a good free one it's great because i've been looking for a replacement for avg a so i like a vast better than avg personally okay. i've heard conflicting opinions on kapersky versus a vast so i'm interested in three main things how well is it going to protect me and that's a close question next to what drain is it going to put on my machine? Exactly. exactly. I would rather have something that doesn't update as frequently, but has less memory and CPU. I feel like I also, resources I also, being I used. I feel like it's a, it's a behavioral thing. Like if I trust myself on the internet, not to go to a weird stuff. place, if I, I'm not going to click on stupid stuff. That's I don't think I need having it. Internet. Like don't, don't don't install here. Don't install Flash. Yeah, yeah. Use Chrome <laughs> and throw on a. a Chrome, is, did Chrome stop installing Flash automatically? Yeah, because we had a we had an incident with that last night. Because, I know, I know, because uh, I know somebody my head, somebody dude. wanted to play their Candy Crush on here and went to <laughs> Facebook and was like, "If this can't happen, this is a no go." Um, <laughs> so, you yeah. Know. I, I had no at least on my Mac it. at home, I have to after I I have to install Flash, mm -hmm. and there's a special Chrome Flash plugin versus the Firefox or Opera. It doesn't bug you as much as the other ones yeah. do. That's for sure. I know I, I pulled this up while you were talking about it on a vast website. Uh, need to protect your PC with Windows XP? Mm -hmm. Why yes, I got lots of those still. The, so there's like three tiers of a vast. I use I honestly use the free one. It's mm -hmm. not like I'm a huge corporation or anything. Um, and what they do is you actually just sign up with an email address and they send you a key and you just have to keep signing up every year. So every, okay. every 365 days you get a, like starting a month prior, you get a notification. So, so if you're setting this up for your parents or something, you have to like kind of set yourself on reminder. Yes. So, but now the nice thing is, is that all you do is go in 
on that that marker and it'll prompt you and say hey you need a new key click here that's not and bad they, they email you a new key so it's not bad it's not bad okay all right so vast or was the other one kapersky kapersky i've heard pretty good like i said mine i'm more worried about resource drain on the machine yeah um I've like i a, would never throw these on like a production machine or something yeah. I mean, just I'm trying to keep those as clean as possible. Yeah. So, well, I I would, I mean, I have like for work, I have to have AV on my production work equipment. So, from for even well, for that's connecting understandable from home, because your work does not trust. Yeah, most of the people probably working on their computers. So, <laughs> but I mean, even on honest. my home machine, for me to connect from my home machine into work, uh, yeah, it does a virus that's check. And Kaspersky, so, that's K A S P E R S K Y. Yes, S K Y. S K Y. S K Y. K K. If you want to check that out, and there's a freebie. Yeah, I've heard good things about them. Okay, and I think they do have a free option, like AVG does and um, Avast does, right. free for home use. Go check them out. Go check them out. Um, Hot Wheels uses AVG. Yeah, Kraus yeah. says a vast rules. I think well, well AVG. I don't mm -hmm. do, does it free anymore. Yeah, I it know. does. Oh, I thought, I <laughs> they have free for home use. Most of them are now they on, under the caveat of free for home use. Yeah, yeah, but but they will also uh, take over absolutely every search engine or anything else on any of your browsers on your computer. A vast will not do that. A vast will not do that. No, because. Ugh. Interestingly <laughs> enough, so one of the interesting things that I saw out of Avast, though, it does have hooks into um, at least Firefox. Okay. And if a website is a known malware injection point, it will actually come up and say, this site has been logged as a malware site. Are you sure you want to visit it? Mm-hmm. I've had I know I, I don't know if it's because it's a new install over here, but I was clicking on some links like somebody earlier. Somebody's linked to their Twitter, mm -hmm. and it says this isn't actually going to Twitter.com, and, and I don't have anything on here at all. Whatever came with Chrome when I logged into it, and Chrome started doing that too. So Chrome started well, to Chrome, build that into Chrome. Yeah, Chrome was already doing the, uh, but it was a different page. It was a different page mm -hmm. than, than I'm used to seeing. Um, usually, when I leave off an HTTP, when there's supposed to be an HTTPS. They'll say, hey, there's a problem here, you know. Um, I don't know. Uh, so watch out for that. Um, geez, what do we have next? That's it. We're on the outro, aren't we? We're on the outro. We were, we were <laughs> on the, the schedule. We were, we we were trying to say we awesome went back and around, and I don't know what's the next anymore. Um, it's time for the outro and title options. It's time for the outro and title options. <laughs> Wait, what? This one goes out to our moms, 99 problems, and a dongle ain't one. Uh, I feel like we've used that before. We, oh, we, we do record here live where you can give your title suggestions and everything at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, Twitter at AwesomeCast. Or hit us up, AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. Or on Facebook, Google+, Plus, all kinds of stuff. Let us know your thoughts and stuff that we talked about. Any stories you think we should talk about for the next week or anything like that. Uh, thanks, of course, to uh, Michael Allen, uh, Mike Allen PR on the Twitters uh, for helping with notes and tweets all night long. And I'm watching John and Katie just like doing something with cursors in the document. I don't, what, what are you doing? I'm just bouncing around and then I decided, hmm, it'd be fun to like, as she's typing. Yeah, I get kind of clicky. So yeah, you I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. This is like my nervous twitch. Um, anyways, uh, the, the, uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.